Seal. Um, welcome. Um, of course, we were all supposed to be in Ballantrae today celebrating the food festival. And unfortunately, the live event was cancelled, but I'm really pleased to be part of the virtual festival. So today I'm going to do a seafood dish. Um, this year, Visit Scotland are celebrating the year of coasts. So I thought it would be really nice to do a seafood dish for you. And I've teamed up with Peroni's Fish. Um, so they have um, supplied some beautiful local crab and some Scottish mussels. And I'm going to use those to make a seafood linguine with some lovely little um, fresh tomatoes. I'm also going to make you some garlic bread, which is from Jeju Bakehouse. Um, she just lives up the road from me, and Mina, and she makes beautiful sourdough breads. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make some garlic toast. Um, but first, we're going to go over to Victoria from Peroni's Fish, over to her house, and she's going to show you how to prepare the um, mussels and how to um, prepare the crab if you want to learn how to dress the crab yourself. Thanks, Linz. Hi, I'm Victoria from Peroni's, and today I'm going to demonstrate on how to prepare mussels and how to prepare a crab so that you can get that lovely meat that you get in the crab uh, and that you see on the plate out of the shell. The easy part is the cooking, it's the getting it from the shell is the slightly trickier part that I'll hopefully be able to demonstrate for you today. Okay, so to start, we're gonna need a few bits and pieces uh, before we try to crack open these. Uh, the main one is something to bash your shells with. I'm going to use this metal steel uh, and I'm going to use the back of the knife to actually give it a good hit with. Um, I'm, I'm going to need a pair of really good scissors to really crunch into the shell when you get to the cutting bit. Uh, obviously you can use what you have in your house. Um, a rolling pin will do absolutely fine, even a hammer if you actually don't have anything else, just give a hammer a wee shot. Uh, and I'm going to actually use a towel to try and stop uh, the shell from breaking everywhere. Is it? Okay, so Lindsay's dish uh, is looking for about uh, 300 grams of crab meat. So I'm going to start with this big guy here and I'm hoping that we actually might get about, uh, about 120, 130 grams out of this crab. You will see when we go through it that there's not much brown meat you get from a crab at all. But the bigger the crab, the better because that is where some of your meat is. Um, I'm not going to cook this. This crab is already pre-cooked. Uh, you put uh, to cook a crab. It's very simple. These you can get live in the shop at Peroni's, um, and you just chuck it in a pot of boiling water, slightly salted, for about 25 minutes. Uh, take it out and let it cool down. The heat remains in uh, the crab for quite some time, so it takes quite a while for it to cool down. Um, if you want to cool it down quicker. I uh, get some ice and put it into a bowl of cold water and chuck the crab in that, but it's pretty hot when it comes out. So, good to go. I am going to put the crab around. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three, no, four, sorry, legs, and I'm going to rip them off. I'm going to sit them here. And the same with these ones, I'm going to take them off. I'm going to sit them here. The next, I'm going to take the claws off. And I'm going to take this claw off. And that is now leaving the shell of the crab. Right, so next, I'm going to get your knife and we're going to stick it in there. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the other corner and we're just going to do that. So now we can see that we've released the middle section here. And I'm going to turn this round and if I can, I'm going to pull this out. And all that is for the bin. So in here is where we're going to get our brown meat, but there's quite a lot of this that we're going to bin. So, so next we need to actually try and cut around this line here. Side. 
right? Now, if you want to keep the shell and reuse it to do a dress crab for presentation, then that's also fine. But you need to give it a good wee clean. There, we have our brown meat, the crab. So that's how much brown meat has come out of the crab. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah? Okay, I'm going to clean this and then we're going to attack the paws. Now that we have the brown meat, we're going to move on to the yummy white meat, um, which it's not hard, it's just fiddly again. I would advise using a dish towel or a towel uh, to place over the meat uh, and we're going to give it a bash and it's going to stop the shell. Uh, smashing everywhere. So let's see what I can get from this. This here has a big piece of cartilage that runs down the middle. But on either side of the cartilage is this lovely, lovely white flaky crab meat. I'm just going to flake right into here. to reveal this little piece of cartridge that we want to put in the bin. So we're going to move on. Okay, so that's us done the claws. Um, I've quickly done the second one. I don't think we needed to see me go through the two. Um, but you can also, in these lovely legs, get some meat out of them too. I've slightly bashed this one down for you, but there is plenty uh, of white meat in here if you want to continue bashing your way through and getting out this cracking white meat. Now again, be careful, there's cartilage that runs right through the legs um, and you just have to peel your shell around. Um, the cartilage and just put your white meat out as you work your way down. Uh, so I'm not going to do these for you um, as I think by now it's pretty straightforward. All you're doing is working your way through the crab uh, bit by bit and pulling out the white meat. Um, obviously the brown meat being the messiest and probably the hardest one to distinguish the brown meat but it, it's, a, it's again, it's by, by feel and by touch you will see that there's no bitty bits or no cartilage or bone or shell that uh, is left over. So that is your meat. This is a pretty good sized crab. Um, uh, so I'd estimate you've probably got about 130-140 grams of meat here to use. So a couple of these big crabs would do for the dish. If not, maybe three, three smaller ones would do. I would estimate in one size that maximum you're going to get about 100 grams of meat out of this. If not, this is probably more for the foodie. Uh, is to prepare this way. There is plenty of other options. You can have pre-dressed crabs in the shop with the meat is already prepared and back in the shell for you or there is also pasteurised crab meat that you can actually purchase too. Okay, so now that we've done the crab, uh, I'm just going to do a quick uh, run through on how to prepare mussels for cooking, um, I, which I'll leave Lindsay to go through with you. Um, it's fairly straightforward, just some key elements. We are quite fortunate that most mussels these days are rope grown, um, so they don't actually need too much work done to them. Um, I'm trying to find one here that has got a wee beard. So yeah, so the mussels, they, they basically, you need to go through them and if you find any wee straggly bits that are coming out the mussels, um, I call it the beard, we need to de-beard them. So the best way I do that is picking it 
and I just pull it down like that. So you pull it down the way towards the point of the muscle. Um, I've already given these um, a good scrub under some cold water, um, but again, as they're root grown, most muscles don't carry much barnacles that you're trying to get off by scrubbing. Uh, a good nail brush or just using your knife uh, and going down the muscles like that to get the barnacles off. There's a little one there. We'll actually just get it off for you. So you could do that and get it off and you'll get that off. But if you are taking them off, give them a good rinse under cold water before cooking again. But uh, you need to go through each muscle singly and just double check that they're all closed. And if you find any that are open, which I bet you because I just cleaned them, they're all closed. Um, you, you'll be able to know, so yeah, all these are closed, which is good, uh, and the rest Lindsay's got. Um, uh, you can tell if uh, you need to discard one of the muscles because if you actually press the muscle like this, you should feel a tiny bit of tension within the muscle as it starts to close. It's not gonna snap shut as quite a lot of people would expect. What it's gonna do is just gonna slowly actually close, but you'll feel that tension when you squeeze like that to get it to close, in which case it's fine to put, put it in the bowl and that's good for cooking. But any, any ones that are not doing that, you get it a tap or there's no movement when you do that, just discard them immediately. Um, but really they need a good scrub under cold water and if anything have got any of the wee beards, pick the beards off and that's you good for cooking. Okay, thanks for watching. That's all from uh, me, Victoria, from Peronis. I am gonna hand you over to Home Cook School. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, please fire a question up and I'll be there to answer as many questions um, as you have. Thank you. Back to Lynn's. So I have my um, water for the pasta. It's boiling vigorously and um, if you use a pan, something similar to this, like a chef's pan or a saute pan, and ideally something that has a lid. Um, so first of all, we're going to um, add some butter, and I'm going to use a mixture of butter and olive oil. And that's just because it's just less likely to um, catch and burn, but it's nice to have that buttery flavour through the um, pasta. So a little bit of both. And whilst that's melting, I'm just going to add into the, um, the pasta water some oil, splash of oil. So just make sure your water is bubbling nice and vigorously and a good pinch of salt. And bear in mind the fact that you're going to pour away most of the pasta water afterwards. You don't and be shy with the salt. And about 400 grams of um, linguine, or you could use spaghetti. Okay, so into our um, butter, I'm going to add a chopped large onion. I'm just going to let that um, saute away for a little minute, give it a little stir. And whilst that is doing its thing, I am going to just prep some of the other ingredients. So I've got here some fennel seeds. So this will give it a slightly aniseedy taste. So I'm just going to use around a teaspoon of fennel seeds and I'm going to grind them up in a pestle and mortar. And again, it's not absolutely essential. The aniseed flavour is not for everybody. So about a teaspoon of um, fennel, if we're using it. And I'm just going to give it a little grind. That's that. And I'm also going to use two chilies. If you're not keen on too much chilli, you don't need to use as much as that, but we love a lot of chilli in our house and these particular ones are not that hot. So I'm just going to take the top off, cut it in half and then you can just use a little um, spoon to just scrape the seeds out. 
like that. And I'm just going to cut it into little strips and then nice, chop it up nice and finely. And in addition to this, we're going to use two large cloves of garlic. which I'm going to give it in, or you could chop it or crush it, however you prefer. Okay. Oh, I can smell the fennel, it smells lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to give this pasta a little stir, that's it all in now. Just stir it just to separate the pieces and so there's no big chunks stuck together and then I'm going to pop the lid on. Unfortunately it's not smell vision it's smelling really good here already. for any background noise that you might hear because my, my children are at home and there's no avoiding them. And um, I'm going to also chop up a couple of um, brown anchovies and this is just going to add a nice bit of saltiness to uh, the dish. If you're not um, too keen on anchovies you can omit this but it will, they'll melt in um, and it won't be particularly obvious, but it'll just add a really lovely bit of salty um, flavour in. Okay, so these are just going to go in just now. And I'm going to now just do the um, garlic. So as I say, a couple of big cloves. And I just use a, um, a little grater like this, which I always go on about in my classes. It's just a really good tool just for um, garlic, ginger, lemon, chocolate, etc. Okay, so I'm going to peel the garlic. Sorry, we had a brief interlude there while we had noisy children interrupting us. Um, in the background, putting me off my flow. So I'm just grating in um, a couple of cloves of garlic. I just love using these because they're so quick. So it's a 
about 300 grams of cherry tomatoes. Um, I buy the little ones that are on the um, vine, just because I think they're normally sweeter. So that's about 300 grams there. any muscles which were open um, give them a little click and they should close but any that are still open um, just get rid of them and they, they've started opening already so I'm going to put the lid on and just give that a little minute just to steam and uh, open up and now that we're going to get the next thing ready so this is the crab meat. This is around um, 300 grams of crab meat. And that's around a kilo of mussels. Um, and some fresh parsley. You can, it's worth saying, um, adapt the recipe. So you don't necessarily need to use crab and mussels. You could use um, langoustines and squid, you can lobster. You can get the lobster locally as well. They sell it. Oh, but 
it back on for a minute. Just to the rest of those muscles open up. So I've checked the pasta, the pasta's ready. Um, best way to do it is just to actually taste a piece of make sure. Uh, you want the pasta to be al dente, which means that it has a little bite to it, so you don't want it to be too soft. Um, and the oil that I added has really helped it not to all stick together. So I'm going to drain the pasta. And um, our sauce is looking good as well. I've had a little taste of it and because obviously there's seafood in there, I didn't feel it needed any salt. And there's a good kick to it too with the chilli. So I'm going to just um, chop up some parsley. Um, you can use basil as well, fresh basil is really nice um, too, either or. I've been growing some parsley in my garden, I've got some basil in the greenhouse. I'm hoping to make some nice uh, pesto if I get enough. Okay, and your lemon, just um, add a little bit just now, and then we can um, add more, we, we can add some lemon wedges to the, the finished dish. People can add more if they want, I always like a lot of lemon. Okay, just give that a stir in. And just put on most of the parsley, and just retain a little bit. Uh, you'll notice with that parsley I just um, chopped the stems because they were nice and fine but obviously if you've got chunkier stems then uh, just remove them. It's starting to look lovely. Right so for the linguine um, on the line. 